Hello everyone, my name is Amol Nergutkar, I'm the CEO of Patient Prism and I'm here live at our Patient Prism studios at in Denver at the 2022 Dykema PSO conference and I'm here with my good friend Austin Hare from Le Leaders Real Estate and um, Austin um, and I met less than a year ago and I was quite fascinated by what he was doing in, in the dental real estate space and there's a lot of things that he does and I'll, I'll let him talk about them but I was pretty impressed because he's got a great podcast he invited me to be on it uh, several months ago and um, and you did pretty good too oh thank you thank you thank you I appreciate it I, I, I try to be a better person every day nice um, but uh, Austin tell us a little bit about the breadth of services you're doing right now with leaders real estate and how it's helping the DSO community. Yeah, so we're really a data and analytics company at heart that just found a way to monetize what we do via real estate transactions instead of charging like exorbitant fees for data and transactions and that sort of thing. What we do is we focus on the site selection and it's great for de novos, but even if you want to do a relocation. And so then as by doing the brokerage, you know, we kind of realized, hey, there's an opportunity to do development here because oftentimes not everything is available that you want. So right. in, in those situations, we'll come in, we'll purchase it, we'll develop it, and we'll do a lease back to the group. And um, we also have a fund on the blockchain right now that we're using to acquire real estate. Whenever there's acquisition and the real estate is in play and the doctor, the private practice, you know, he might want to sell it, the group might not want to buy it, right? And so we can come in and we can acquire that real estate and do a lease back with the DSO as well. That's fascinating because, I mean, obviously we've seen this all along, right? Uh, at least in the private equity space. Uh, they're interested in the business, they're interested in the operating business uh, because it has the return profile that they need. Uh, and, and real estate is not, unfortunately, uh, it's not sexy enough for them. <laughs> I, right? get I get it, I get it. And I get that, right? I mean, it's, um, and, and, and so you are creating a vehicle uh, for them to uh, get some cash flow right away uh, for the selling doctor or the mm -hmm. selling group, selling doctor usually. And, and then, and, and then get it off the chest. So that way, uh, the the doctor potentially um, gets money right off the bat, or whatever they're getting. Plus, they get the real estate side, and and they've had a and a good transaction, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know. REITs are historically the way that most doctors have like sold a lot of their real estate because there's great tax advantages. Uh, the problem is. 90% of the cash flow gets paid out by dividends. So your ROI is not very good. And then you have a lot of other expenses, right? Cash flow is pretty good, but ROI is not as great. That's the trade off. Now you've got regular funds. The problem there is your ROI is better, but there's no liquidity because your shares are tied up. You have right. to sell them to an accredited investor. You got to go through an intermediary. And so we just did it all on the blockchain. We did our real estate fund on the blockchain. So that way we can solve both those problems. So you can essentially. There's no taxable event because you're exchanging your real estate for shares or tokens, in this case, of the fund. And you're participating in the appreciation of the building and you're not having to man having the headache to manage it anymore. And so if you do have a liquidity event or a capital requirement, like, you know, you got, historically, you got a million dollar building, your kid goes to college or they're getting married or you got to sell it, right? Well, now, because they're on, you have shares of them, you know, you can sell as many or as little shares as you want to to pay for something. Or you, could, you could do 100 grand, 250, so, whatever you want. So are you saying that blockchain uh, and the tokenization of that ownership? Yeah, so I, I, uh, the blockchain is like very, very polarizing. People think Bitcoin and either you love it or it's going to zero, right? right. But really all it is is a ledger, right? And the tokens, it's just a, a way to quantify those shares on the blockchain, right? So it's a, it works for all intents and purposes as a regular fund. Okay, but so I have a million dollars of real estate. It's free and clear. Okay. And um, I am trying to send my kid to college, and it's going to cost me a hundred grand. So what, yeah, what, great. What, what, what am I? Perfect. Yeah, saying? great example. So in this situation, you know, say we agree upon the value is a million bucks for the real estate, right? Okay. So then we acquire your real estate with tokens of the fund. So it's the exact same way that a real estate fund would acquire your real estate with shares, right? Or whatever. In the example that a share is worth 20, 10 bucks, you know, it would take uh, whatever, 1,000 shares or whatever to, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not doing the math correctly, whatever it is, right? So you do, you'd issue that exact amount of shares to buy the real estate. 100,000 shares, yeah, $10, yeah, yeah. $10 shares, a million dollars, perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. it's been a long, been a long conference. So 100,000 shares, right? We, we would issue you 100,000 shares to acquire that real estate. Well, it's the exact same thing. If the token is valued, in our case, at $20, we'd simply issue 50,000 shares okay. in order to acquire that million dollars of the real estate, right? So now, you've got 50,000 tokens, right? AKA a share, doesn't matter. The only difference is that it's done on the blockchain. So here's the difference though. The benefit of having tokens over shares is you no longer have to 
sell to an accredited investor, right? There is a there is a twelve month waiting period before you can sell to an accredited before you can sell to a non accredited investor. Sure, sure. But it's only three months before you can sell to an accredited investor, right? So your money is only tied up for three months, really, and then after twelve months, sell to whoever you want. So if you're planning ahead of time, like you're talking about college, usually you plan those things out ahead of time. Well, now you've got you know a million dollars worth of of real estate in the on the, in, in these tokens and these shares, and if you want to sell a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, whatever it is, you can divide it up however you feel comfortable to create capital or liquidity for yourself to pay for whatever you want to pay for. Where does the value come from in those tokens? They're backed by real estate, right? So, okay, okay, they're yeah, backed by real estate. Yeah, exactly. So it represents each share, each token represents a percentage of that building, right? So like each each token is twenty dollars, right? Or let's just use the example we used earlier of ten dollars. Like ten dollars is a certain percentage of a million dollars. It's a fraction. It's a very small fraction of I percentage. See, I see. That's what those tokens represent. It's a small percentage. The tokens is simply just the means to which you transfer back and forth. So is it an exchange? Yeah, yeah. So we're creating our own exchange, working with developers, right? We're not creating our own exchange, but we're creating our own token. So a token is like a little bit like a cryptocurrency, right? It's like its own cryptocurrency to that extent. But it's back, like it's cryptos, back by that specific. Yeah, exactly. But, but how do you trade that token? Can I? How can I use on a platform? So, yeah, like, and and then who will buy that token? So yeah, anybody. I mean, like that's what's interesting. You know, the market right now. There are people that are on different uh, crypto platforms that are investing in different things, right? So there's a couple different things. Number one, you might just know somebody who is a friend of yours who wants to get in on this real estate, right? So in right. the past, like let's imagine your friend knows that you sold your real estate. Or knows that you have a real estate and he wants he wants to buy some of it, like but it's in a fund. It's very difficult to kind of facilitate that transaction. Now it's like, hey, you know, just create your create your account and then you buy them for me. Bam, that's it, right? So like you're, he's transfer you money on the account and then you'd send the tokens to him. So that's you're buying and, so, you're buying and trading so tokens if, with if, whoever you want. If I have a, a million dollars of real estate and I want to exchange that for a million dollars tokens, is that a sale? It's it by. To my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but it, it is not a taxable event. So yeah. if you're if you are just exchanging your real estate for 100% of tokens, then you're you don't no, owe taxes who, on no, that who, until you cash out those tokens. Once you sell but them, the, who, who holds the title at that point? Well, the so the so the it just just like a regular fund right. where you've got the shares, yeah. right? The title will be owned by the holding company. So we're we're still facilitating the transactions the exact same way. So we yes. would we could, you know, we own the real estate, you know, we take we could secure debt, we still secure debt. All the financials are the exact same. So we're securing debt, we're using equity from our capital partners. Um, we're we're still getting lending from the bank. Uh, well and not and in this situation, like you said, you owned it 100% free and clear, right. so we're not paying anybody off. So right. that's a little bit different. But for the most part, the fundamentals are the exact same, right? The title is in the name of the fund, and then you have shares of that fund. So like, because you have a million dollar building, well, what if there's $10 million worth of real estate in that thing? Like you would, you still have a token worth $20, right? Or a share that's worth $20. Right. But it's a smaller percentage of the overall fund because the overall fund is 10 times bigger than the real estate that you contributed. So... It doesn't matter, like whether it's tokens, whether it's shares. The math always you just it works nice. out to where you have an equal percentage of the value that you contribute, right? You contribute a million dollars to a ten million dollar fund, you would get shares equivalent to ten percent of the value of that fund in the form of, of tokens. Interesting. Well, um, how do you um, how do people uh, kind of get get this executed? Yeah, so we started the process in January. It's okay. been very arduous with the lawyers, the legal fees, and the developers. Right. So launch date right now is we're hoping for the fall, but it could it could get extended, right? So um, it's in the pipeline. Like we're not we couldn't we're not phys physically ready to acquire real estate right now. That being said, we still actively acquire it, right? Like right. it doesn't have to be through the fund. If you got a building that's bottlenecking a transaction that the doctor wants to sell, we can we can close quick. I mean, everything operates on a spectrum of, of price and money, right? Like if you're trying to like get the absolute maximum top dollar price and you can afford to wait 12 months or however long it takes to sell, might not be a good fit, but if you gotta sell quick for whatever reason, then we can close in 60 days. That's interesting. And then if, if and, and what other services that you guys do you, so you, if, if, if there's a DSO that is looking to open up a de novo, you'll do site selection, yeah. demographic analysis, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Psychographic analysis. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, like you said, analytics, demographics. Um, essentially, what it looks like is you every every group has their own patient avatar, and so they're going to be a little bit different based on what are you doing? Are you are you PPO, Medicare, Medicaid, Ortho? Um, 
it's all specialty. It doesn't matter, right? It's all different. Right. So we create a profile that fits you, and then we're going to look at all the different anchor tenants in the area. And largely, those are grocers. So we're largely looking at all the grocers, and we're going to tier them based on their compatibility with your clients, right? Because obviously, you've got like the, the Walmart Whole Foods dichotomy, right. but not all Walmarts are created equal, not all targets are created equal. So within your trade area, how does that target score with your demographic of, of right. patients? So we're gonna, we're gonna tier those out, and then we're gonna go through and plot out all the competition. We're gonna put all that on a map. So we're doing a constant kind of analysis of, of that balance between you know good anchor tenants and good, uh, and not, yeah. not so much saturation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, everybody wants to be close to the grocery stores, right? But like. Uh, for Heartland, for example, is two years out on the public's developments. Like they know exactly where they're going. They got a partnership. They're good to go, and they have dental exclusivity in all the public's markets. So we can't get directly there. How, the question is, how close can we get when there's already exclusivity of a dental there? So that's what that's what we're just kind of doing. We're kind of balancing all those equations because even though we do analytics, it's still more of an art than a science. You know? Right. Absolutely. Yes. So there's a lot of it's like the you know thousands of site selections that have happened over the years that can kind of help shape our perspective and really you know what we do is give it our stamp of approval for locations well um this is absolutely fascinating and most of it i understand i, but some I appreciate it's, it's no hard. all the questions yeah yeah because um, I, I think those are good questions that people don't understand and i appreciate you pushing back because <laughs> it helps to clarify that yeah i mean I, I think a lot of us know what we know and we don't know what we don't yeah. know yeah and as, as you guys uh, dentists or dso's or you, as you guys think about real estate it might not be a bad idea to just have Austin on 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 retainer or whatever that his uh, uh, process is to just understand what your options are. Yeah, and, and so you know our thesis is we want to we want to be the third party real estate department without the overhead, right? So if you're right. a group and you're growing, right. um, you know we're, we'll waive the we'll waive the fees. It can be anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars to do an analysis, but we'll waive those. Um, as long as we're protected to earn the brokerage fees. So it wouldn't really cost you anything as, as a group to have us you know, do a selection for you. Look at it. And I've talked about this for a long time. Is that, again, uh, it's, there's, so many, there's so much gray. There's, it's never black and white. The deal is never this way or that way. There's all this gray, and you need somebody. Even looking at a lease, it's so – I mean, I remember this. I mean, I, I was a CPA. I still am a CPA. But for the longest <laughs> time, we had all these clients sign these leases, and – they're like, all right, well, I, you just signed them and you didn't understand them. <laughs> and there's so much in them that you could negotiate, look at the details. And that's what you need people like um, Austin for because you want to understand what you're being fed, um, what your options are, and, and not being taken advantage of. But at the same time, take advantage of the, uh, of the opportunities that are out there for you, whether it's you're building a new office, whether you're selling your office, whether you're tokenizing the value of your office, whatever that might be. Um, Austin's a great guy to know, and um, he's also a ninja warrior, so <laughs> if you need health tips, he can always give you them. Uh, I haven't taken them yet, but I hope to one day. So thank you so much. It's great. a pleasure, sir. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you.